another day, another prominent political leader, Representative John Conyers, accused of sexual misconduct. Goody. Just what we needed. With all this coming out, it would be easy to let the radical feminist convince us the problem is masculinity. Well, a New York Times opinion piece has already gone there with a doozy titled, The Unexamined Brutality of the Male Libido. But it's not just this op-ed. There's a bigger New Age social experiment that seeks to not only address dangerous masculinity, but also eliminate the whole notion that men are indeed men. Instead of placing the blame where it belongs, on pervy men, they have to blame manhood in its entirety. Well, I have some final thoughts. There are sick men who do sick things because they think in their pants, not their brains. 1,000% agree. But playing with dolls, wearing makeup, or using gender-neutral pronouns will do nothing, absolutely zero, to correct sick men who do sick things. There is nothing wrong with boys being boys and girls being girls. Sexual harassment doesn't go away by encouraging boys to be more like girls. Turning little boys into little girls, or worse, erasing gender roles altogether, will never be the solution. We fix this problem in three ways. One, we empower women and girls to speak up and nip this BS in the bud. That's not feminism, that's confidence. I was raised in a traditional family with traditional gender roles, and I can tell you this, if you touch me and I don't want to be touched, it'll be the last time you make that mistake. Period. Two, we stop glorifying fatherless homes. The best way to learn how to be a real man, a man who respects women, is from a man. Problem is, the Democrats have ushered in a new family where the government replaces the father. Meanwhile, popular culture tells women their children don't need fathers. Yeah, who needs male leadership, guidance, and love when the almighty government can cut checks, right? Well, guess what? Fathers are important, and admitting that doesn't take a damn thing away from mothers, single mothers included. And three, we cut the entitlement mentality off at its knees. These sick men touch, grope, harass, and rape women, not because of their masculinity, but because they think they're entitled to it. They think they deserve it. Well, they're dead wrong. Part of the reason for this entitlement mentality among politicians is taxpayer-funded slush funds designed to get our favorite perverts out of hot water at our expense. We don't fix the problem by eliminating masculinity. We don't end harassment by man-hating or beating the feminist war drum. Masculinity isn't a dirty word. If we continue to blame masculinity, we're just going to be left with a bunch of men who use politically correct pronouns, makeup, and rompers, but still can't keep their hands and their privates to themselves. The New Age experiment doesn't fix the problem, and that's the cold, hard truth. And those are my final thoughts. From L.A., God bless, and take care. You know, Washington is a swamp in more ways than one. The predators aren't just political. They're sleazy, sexual perverts who claim the moral high ground based not on truth and justice, but on rank politics. And the craziest part is whenever there is a finding against one of these perverts, you pay the damages. And this must end. I have a few solutions. Number one, if an employee, if a congressman or senator makes a sexual claim and wins, which requires you, the taxpayers, pay the settlement, we must get the money back. Since when have taxpayers been responsible for the sexual perversions of people we send to Congress to represent us? So how do we get the money back? We take it out of their pay. We sue them or we take it out of their pension. No hardworking, taxpaying American should ever have to pay for the sexual immorality of these deviants. Number two, if an elected official seeks to hide a settlement for sexual harassment by putting it in his operating budget and thus secretly paying the victim, not only should reimbursement be made to us, but a criminal investigation should be opened. Covering up payment to a complainant by saying the woman is working when she is not is a no-show job, conspiracy, and a fraud for which state legislators have gone to jail. Number three, no more confidentiality. Complainants are forced to work in this same office where they allege the harassment or the hostile work environment occurred, and they're forced into counseling for 30 days and then mediation for another 30 days, as if they're at fault for being a victim. 
while the lawmakers, well, they're not required to go to anything. Every one of these cases needs to see the light of day. And if we as a society demand that complaints against priests be exposed and filed through our criminal justice system, these representatives should at the very least be held to the same standard. And number four, where there's been a finding of a hostile work environment or sexual harassment against an elected official, he or she must resign. Now, I've been telling you in the D.C. swamp, it doesn't matter to what party you belong. These establishment politicians have had dirt on each other for years, and so they are held hostage to each other. They cannot risk taking a stand for us. That's why they'll say one thing to us and in the quiet of the night pass a budget that is totally inconsistent with what they promised us. The old boy network at work. One hand washes the other. You don't tell on me, and I won't tell on you. Think of it. 264 payouts, $17.2 million. The fund is virtually unlimited. And that doesn't include no-show payments by congressmen who don't want any record, who cover up their wrongdoing in their own operating budget. It all started in 1995. The Congressional Accountability Act of the 104th Congress. What I want to know is who decided that sexual wrongdoing by these fools is not their responsibility, but instead the taxpayers? Who decided we would pay for their sexual perversions? Who decides or sits in judgment on these claims? Why is this stuff confidential? Why don't we know who these findings are against? And shame. Shame on the women in Congress who sat quietly for the last 20 years, knowing that there was a fund used to cover up sexual perversions, which makes the next federal female employee walking into that office vulnerable. And while these hypocrites trumpet the buckets of money that they put out to fight violence against women, they commit the very acts themselves, and they laugh at us at the same time. And as part of their charade, they voluntarily seek, as in the case of Senator Al Franken, an ethics or a House committee to review their actions. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash. The fix is in, folks. The last time a senator was kicked out of the Senate was during the Civil War. They think we're stupid. And maybe we are. And isn't it interesting that Al Franken demands that Roy Moore, accused of acts 40 years ago. And by the way, I've been real clear on how I feel about Moore. Franken says that Roy Moore has to go while Big Al Franklin has not even denied the sexual harassment allegations against him that occurred while he was a sitting United States senator. Where are our leaders? Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, for all your talk and moral piety. Each of you must immediately demand the release and unmasking of those against whom sexual harassment findings have been made. Otherwise, you get out too. Enough of this mess. And these guys have the gall to trash the president when they're the ones with actual findings against them, both Senator Franken and Congressman Conyers, and payouts to victims who've had to go through hell to even file a complaint? This isn't about politics anymore, and I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Conservative, or a Martian. If we don't follow a moral code in the halls of Congress, we are doomed as a nation. No one is above the law, and certainly not these bozos.